I think you all know that I don't prepare talks. <clears throat> In a way, I simply wait to see what's delivered or what I'm told to talk about or do. And in a certain sense, that has informed much of my spiritual life and also my career. Um, sort of waiting for, if you will, instruction and direction. Recognizing it when it comes and acting upon it. <laughs> I, I often have this feeling when I sit down this will be the first time I don't talk at all, which perhaps some of you would feel like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you don't need to hear more from Bruce. Uh, <clears throat> and if that is your feeling, you can sign out at any point in time and be rest, rest assured that you've probably heard most of it. But something so strongly came up, I don't even know how to talk about it, really, except it was the concept of spiritual tests. And it is something that seems relevant in that much of the life experience that we have, especially the school experience, is filled with tests. And we can pass, we can fail, we can move forward, we can get held back, we can feel uh, deeply proud of a test, we can feel very nervous about a test, we can feel very grateful just to have passed, but they seem to be integrated into much of our scholastic life, and then, in a funny way, into our spiritual lives. This idea of moving forward, but not moving forward, not being allowed to go to the next step, the next grade, if you don't pass. You have to repeat. You have to figure out, what did I get wrong? Where am I not functioning properly? Where am I not intelligent enough? Whatever it is that seems to be holding you in place. And that doesn't really go away. If anything, as the journey deepens, heightens, continues toward its conclusion, perhaps graduation, the tests start to, in a way, intensify. More than high school, more than college. And the outcome isn't passing the grade so much as being allowed to move forward in a deeper and more profound way. I deal with a lot of people who have stayed in the same grade for a long time. A lot of second graders, a lot of fifth graders, you know, a lot of people in their sophomore year, they're just there, stuck, circling around it, not even caring often that much about forward movement, just repeating the same kinds of knowledge base, intellectual base, even spiritual base that they have arrived at. And it's basically stuck. It's a stuck position. You're locked into a part of a way of living your life that is not productive, that is not forward moving, that is not satisfying, that is not accomplishing, in a sense, what it is you think you need to accomplish, it's sort of accepting a kind of failure or a kind of, uh, this is who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a graduate of uh, second grade. I'm a graduate of high school, and that's as far as I went. And you look at our culture, which is really interesting, and much of the culture is based on who's high school graduate, who's a college graduate, who is uh, something uh, greater than that, who's a doctorate. You know, society kind of elevates people who have passed the tests or pa continue to pass tests. And it puts you in a stuck mode 
if you haven't. The problem with that is that you identify with the grade you think you have arrived at. So you're a college professor, you're a doctor of this, you're that, and you feel that. Or you are a, a high school dropout and you feel always a certain kind of limitation, possibly shame, possibly just part of the larger group and acceptance of you found your people and you all embrace each other. And I have to say the, the goal isn't so much attainment as it is working yourself into who you are and accepting who you are in some deep foundational way. Not all of us are going to be enlightened, if you will. Not all of us are going to be awakened in some ultimate sense, at least not perhaps on this particular round. And accepting that, accepting the where you are, does one really important thing, which is it gives you a life without uh, self-judgment, if you're lucky. You don't walk around saying, I'm a failure. You don't walk around saying, oh, I could have been, but should have been and would have been. You come to a place, if you're lucky, at some point of going, this is where I am. This is who I am. This is how I am. And in a way, it's a very comforting foundational space because you find where you were supposed to be, and you can kind of live a life according to that, which is in some ways um, comforting. But even though you arrive at that stasis, even though you arrive at that, I am permanently a uh, sophomore, the testing doesn't really stop. It changes character. It goes into a different mode, and you may not think you have to move on to the next grade, but the thing that will start to take place is a kind of dissatisfaction with where you are. Something will start to erode the fact that you have found your space, because it will not be enough. There will be in you something longing, wanting something greater, and you won't be able to articulate what that is very well, but you will know you are somewhat caught, maybe stuck, locked into a state of mind and being that is going to be challenged by the spiritual tests of life. Spiritual tests, unlike high school academic intellectual tests are different, but they're really, really important. And they can work at any level of achievement or attainment in a material sense. A spiritual test is how open are you, how available are you to accepting what is, period. How much can you walk through day-to-day -day life without being angry, without being frustrated, without being challenged, without being sad and emotional, because you don't have what you want, or you didn't get what you wanted, or life is harder than you thought it would be, or you don't like where it's going. All of these challenges that will start to arrive that have very little to do with whether or not you can remember an equation in mathematics, or whether or not you can remember who wrote that poem or that book. All of that phew, education falls away. But what does last is this sense of judgment, self, identity, if you will. Who am I? Who did I become? What is this person? And how do I find it not lacking in something? And the problem for most human beings is this mind thing that starts to create a kind of self-judgment, self-disparaging quality that starts to talk to you louder and louder and louder and more and more. And it becomes repetitive. It becomes sad, unpleasant, and descriptive of a person that you, in a certain sense, begin to project into the world. What do you do with that? 
And that, of course, is the nature of spiritual work. Spiritual work, the practice that has tests in it, is can you find a path to opening, accepting, allowing, and surrendering to the what is? To somehow freeing yourself of judgment, freeing yourself of limitation, freeing yourself of the social expectation from other people, can you find a way into just being you, and then can you discover who you are? That's the spiritual test. And it is possibly more work than anything you've done before. Passing second grade spelling, passing the written tests in college, you know, yep, all important, all identifying who you are, who you are, should be, aren't, would like to be, get rid of all that. Because your identification with all of that is a limiting factor. Who you are is none of the above. None of the above. The ride you have been on, the person you think you are, the person that your tests have told you you are, that your teachers tell you who you are, that your partners, that people around you tell you are, forget it. Let that all go completely because it's not who you are. It's a story. It's just a story. It's a story of tests passed and failed. It's a story of thinking I am this and not knowing who you are. Knowing who you are is a different kind of test. Knowing who you are is letting go of all identity, all judgment, all thoughts that come out of your very impacted and very uh, circular mind, letting it go, moving deep inside in the spiritual journey and the practice of going deeper, asking for help, and finding your way to a place that is surprisingly embracing, quiet, open, available, and interestingly, loves you, which is really fascinating person you didn't become in high school, the person you failed to be in college, the person you thought you had become when you got your doctorate, all of that ceases to be the judgment. All that matters is in the spiritual journey, going in deeper and deeper and finding this place of acceptance, joy, beauty, and love that really do exist within you. The only problem with finding that is that it is not that hard to find it superficially. You can go, you can find it and go, okay, I'm a good person. Oh, this is great. Oh, I feel wonderful. Good day, happiness, gratitude, whatever, all that stuff. That's where spiritual tests come in because then they take that away. You can't find it. Suddenly, life has ganged up on you in some way. It may be the old stuff from school and all that other stuff. It may be a relationship. It may be how hard it is to you know, get your car repaired the day you need it to be repaired. I, you know, Who knows what life will bring you and deliver? But you will react to that. You will have an interaction with all of these things. And that interaction with all of these things is a kind of, quote unquote, spiritual test. Spiritual because you can use the fact that life is not giving it to you on your terms in the way you want it. It's giving it to you in its own terms. And you have to have one reaction to that, if you can, which is, I will be done. It ain't easy. It's a really difficult thing. And many people fail over and over and over, including yours truly. So I'm not trying to throw something at you that I can teach you because I know I have to practice this all the time. And I share what I do. I share my practice, which is do the work. Go deeper. It's harder than you thought it would be. They are throwing more curves at you than you imagined. And as you get older, and forgive me, this is a weekly kind of thing I talk about. As you get older, it gets harder. 
They throw more at you. They take away the normative quality of your life. They take away the comfort zones of your life. They take away the known and the expected and all that stuff. And you're still there. And what do you do? You really go deeper. You go deeper. And if you have a practice that's been going on for your whole life, and some people do, and a practice you've engaged with some sincerity, you have the mechanism. You have the skill set to go down deeply enough and say, please help me. And you can sit there no matter how many times the garage tells you your car needs more work on it or your doctor says, you know, you've got this problem or whatever they're going to do, whatever life's going to do, you're going to go, yep, yep. And you just go into this place inside. And I can only tell you because I keep working it day to day, this place inside is like it loves you. How do, how do you describe that? Why? Why does it love you? Why does it care? Why is it pushing you so hard? Because the problem in life is you and your brain and your mind. And it's not going to solve any of the issues and the problems that you're having to solve. The only solution to your suffering and your problems is that you're loved. Deeply, deeply loved. Hard to explain how profoundly caring and embracing the universe is of you. And if your brain is locked into this noisy thing that's going on and on in punishing, punishing ways, frustrated ways, thinking what's wrong with me, what did I do wrong, why is the world so awful? You can go there if you want, but I'm telling you, the passing of the spiritual test is to let go of the bigger and bigger dramas that will occur inevitably if you live long enough. Loss, grief, uh, you know, frustration, inability to move or get around, and all, all that stuff. It's really, it's really very potent. But if you find in yourself that you are loved, even in your immobility, even in your loss of memory, even in the fact that you have lived a life that didn't live up to your particular expectation, all of that goes away. It just goes away. And what you find instead is it loves you. And even if you've had, you know, very real success, and you know, I had a, a life with some success, it's not there. It's not, it's not a defining thing. It's like meaningless. It's like it was a good ride. I had a good ride, and I know that, and I'm grateful for it. But all I can tell you, it does not take care of this inner beauty, love, quality of being that you already have. It doesn't add to the equation. It doesn't subtract. It's only your mind that thinks, I am this, I am that, I should have been this, I should have been that. That's a problem. There is no real problem if you just get into the center space, go deep, Again, ask for help because none of us can do it all that well by ourselves. Go into these places. And what happens is, it, my experience over you know 50 years of doing this, is there's this little spark of whatever you want to call it. It's like, ah, it's just an opening. But it is potent. And it's unbelievable how much it loves you. It's unbelievable. It cares about you. you. And if you sit back and go, oh, I don't believe it. I'm not worthy. And all, you know, okay, that's your, that's your shit, basically. But if you're smart, you go, thank you. Thank you. And it can be very silent. It can be very simple. It doesn't have to be big drama or anything. It's just like, oh, thank you. like that. And, you know, I, <laughs> most of my, time alone driving walking whatever i just go to that space and i just go sit there and i let it carry me i've learned a new word which i really like which is called float just float you know float means be supported be supported and float it doesn't mean do it doesn't mean try to think it doesn't mean anything it's just float and then you just Feel the support until something comes and tells you, okay, now you got to make dinner or whatever it is that comes up. But up until that point, there's a lot of flotation. There's a lot of ease. And the most 
extraordinary part of this is when you start to feel how deep the love goes, you know, I've been using the metaphor of, you know, being in a crib as a baby and your mom comes in and picks you up and holds you. It's that feeling magnified beyond, beyond. The feeling of being held, supported, loved, comforted is somehow in my journey. And again, maybe I'm all completely wrong, but in my journey, it's the core of it. The core. Now, I have described many times, and forgive me, I know it's repeating it, uh, that these experiences of comfort, being held, love, joy, can also go away. That's another test, spiritual test. You think you have it, you think you've somehow earned it, you think you're worthy of it, you think you're cared for forever, and then gone, nothing. No love, no center, no comfort, no anything. And then the mind kicks in, going, what happened? Where is it? Where did, where did it go? What did I do? What did I do wrong? How can I find it? Oh, my God, I don't believe in anything. And suddenly life is a, big, is a big joke. It's not true. None of it's real. That is what starts to come up. If you want to test spiritually, watch that noise. Watch it. You grab hold of that, and it can fill all of space. If at that moment when that happens, and trust me, I do believe it will happen, uh, when it does, you just go and float. Just lie there. Just be. Do not become caught in the judgment and the fear and the loss of everything you held to be true and meaningful and comforting. Try to be comforted by nothing. Try to be comforted without the experience of being held and loved. Try to be, as I've described recently, in the crib and nobody comes. Nobody comes to pick you up. Try to find your way to that kind of self-comforting, that sense of trust, open, if you can, just acceptance of nothing, and watch what happens. That's a spiritual test. My experience, when I pass that test, which means I stop fighting it and getting worried about it, I just go, okay, is there's this rising energy, talk about it all the time, and it's called love, and it's called comfort and care that returns. And it goes, yep, good, that was good. And you feel, and then they go back and forth with testing. I don't know why. But it seems to me every test, you rise to another level of capacity. And what happens when you rise to that new level of capacity is you become what I would call a larger vessel for this love, contentment, consciousness, sweetness, goodness, kindness to manifest in the world. And you become, as a uh, graduate of this school of spiritual work, a vessel for bringing this energy into the world as a person, perhaps as a teacher, but just as a being, and you bring it into every corner of your life, and you will get these little grades along the way going B plus, A minus, C minus, B, whatever it is, depending upon how you're doing with your day-to-day -day thing. And you'll know. So if you're getting angry at the checkout counter, and I talk about you know, I hardly go out, but when I go out, I go shopping. You get angry at the checkout counter, that's that's a C minus. You know, D D plus. That's not yeah, what you're looking for. What you're trying to do when you're at the checkout counter is find a way to turn it into a B plus or an A minus or an A, which is simply trying to turn the situation around in yourself and for the person around you. I had a guy the other day at Staples who all he could talk about was his day from hell. <laughs> he kept talking about his, yesterday was a day from hell and today's even more of a day from hell. Well, that to me was like instruction. My job was to get him out of hell one way or the other. And I used every conscious tool I could find, kindness, helping, talking to him, doing one thing after another, after another. And I saw it working. 
I was getting him out of hell. He may not stay out of hell, and he may slip back into it right as soon as I leave the, the store, but I had a job to do. And it felt to me like it was working for more than the next hour or two. It felt like it was really going somewhere. And I've been having these experiences more and more. I just look who's in front of me and what's their, what, what are they waiting for? And I don't have to incognate that. It's pretty demonstrated in front of me. It's just, there it is, it comes out. So you can start to bring your quality of surrender to the table and try to put it in the world and then, you know, get the grade you get. If you get a lot of A's and you don't identify with the A, I'm the person who does this, they will use you over and over and over to make life a sweeter, better place for other people. And I don't know what our journey in life is about other than passing that test. I don't know. I don't, I mean, you can become a doctor, you can become a lawyer, you can become a, uh, you know, a bricklayer, whatever you become, that's all a certain level. But becoming a kind person who helps the world in some way is the spiritual test. And it's worth, it's worth passing. It's worth trying to get good grades, if you will, not for your sake, because they will dismantle you, but for the sake of everyone around you who will also be dismantled at some point. But what will remain, perhaps, is an environment of kindness and sweetness and love and being held that circulates around you, through you, and comes back to the environment that you inhabit. It's a pretty good, pretty good approach to how to live, as far as I can tell. So that's my talk on spiritual tests. I hope, I hope you guys know you're being tested. I hope you rise to the occasion regularly. I hope you know that it ain't that hard, really. If you have a practice and you do it, it's uh, rewarding on every level. And uh, and if you need help along the way and you want to talk to a teacher, uh, I'm available. I'm happy to talk. But it's not that hard to do. And in the end, you got to figure it out for yourself because we're all in this on our own. And yet we're all in it collectively. And we all share the benefits of everybody getting good grades. So good luck. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. That's just wonderful. 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 Very welcome. Uh, is there a question? Uh, Daniel, was that a question or just your finger? Okay, good. Okay. Well, listen, thank you all for coming. Um, quick sidebar. Um, next week is my uh, 80th birthday. I don't know why I'm so affected by it, but everyone I know, my friend, I have a friend who's turning 80 today. Um, it's a big cognitive moment in this journey, I have to say. And hopefully next week, my son Ari and his girlfriend, Berju, are coming here to uh, join us in a very small familial celebration. Next Sunday, I will teach class in person. And if anybody wants, you guys can't do it, but anybody who's on the on the, on the East Coast who wants to <laughs> come have cake, you know, you're welcome. Sunday, we'll have we'll have some cake. I'm not making a big deal out of this, I hope. Um, but it's just an acknowledgement of something, I guess, of just getting old. Uh, but it's really powerful. I, I, a little other sub-note in all that is that Blanche's sister had a stroke the other day and is in very possibly difficult space. And my whole birthday may get canceled, put by the wayside, which for me is um, not an issue really, but there may be no class next week. I have no I have no idea exactly, but I'll stay in touch. Um, but it's a part of the life journey and it's part of the, the spiritual test, you know, of what's important, what comes first, where do you show up? And, uh, so I'm watching life unfold in many ways and trying to be, uh, I'm trying to practice what I preach mostly. And uh, I'll let, you know, if things change next next week, if not, uh, and most of you are on, yeah, on the West Coast, so it probably doesn't matter. But I just want you to know if there's no class next week, that's probably the reason. And if there is class next week, uh, you know, you can go watch it on YouTube. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming today. I really deeply appreciate it. And you should know, you're, every one of you is 
really, really deeply loved. I may be a channel for it and a lucky one, but it's something bigger than me. And it really, really loves you. So have a great, uh, great rest of the day. And uh, we'll see some of you next week.